So I'm getting a lot of questions on uh, what to look for in a diesel and we made our video on seven things to check when you're buying a used diesel. Um, that works good for a little uh, mechanical engine, uh, older style. Much better way to do it is uh, a fluid analysis and this was actually uh, developed by the airline companies to check the condition of engines that 100% had to be in perfect working order. Can't have a break in when you're up in the air. So um, it's, it's filtered down to the heavy truck industry uh, where it's very popular for warranties, buying a new truck, uh, they actually don't even change the oil until a certain amount of uh, results are achieved on the fluid analysis. And if you don't do a fluid analysis with every oil change, you avoid your warranty. So uh, what it does is actually take a look uh, at the actual oil that's in your engine or your coolant or your transfer case or your transmission or your hydraulic system in an excavator or whatever, and it, and it puts it under a microscope and sees how much aluminum, how much brass, how much nickel, how much whatever is in there, it'll tell you whether there's coolant in there, if it's starting to go in there, if your air filter's dirty, if you uh, didn't wipe your stick off good enough when you checked your oil, um, very, very precise. So it is complicated to read though, so it's very simple, go to any heavy duty truck shop, Freightliner, Mac, Kenworth, Peterbilt, they all have the same stuff. This is from Toramont Cat, and what it is is a sheet that you fill out that tells you how many kilometers or miles or hours are on your oil, what it's out of. Um, um, or your coolant, whatever, and then you get this little can, and all it is is just like a pee bottle at the doctor. Um, you start draining your oil, and then let let a couple um, gallons run out, and then just collect the sample, put it in, send it back to the truck shop that you got it, and in a couple of weeks they'll tell you what uh, you're looking at uh, condition-wise of the engine. So yeah, here we go. So this is a 95 Dodge that's a donor truck for our next project. I don't know exactly what the project is, but I couldn't pass the deal up. It's a P-Pump 5.9 with a 5-speed 4-wheel drive behind it, and I'm sure I can find something to put that into. The truck itself is garbage, rotted away, it's got over 500,000 kilometers on it, leaks oil everywhere, not worthy enough to be put back on the road. So if you're going to invest in a $100,000, $150,000 used uh, piece of equipment, um, and you have the time, it takes a couple weeks to, to analyze the hydraulic oil and the engine oil well well worth it um, and if the customers leer of you analyzing the oil then don't don't buy that piece of equipment right so this was my Silverado it's actually getting uh, reborn again doing uh, quite a bit to it uh, the reasons I parked it is uh, I overheated the transmission because the line came off and this engine was never a hundred percent now the main reason I think that is is because it came out of a Ford 800 and I think it got the Ford disease where something like syphilis went inside of it and just slowly destroyed the engine but um, at the time in the budget I resealed it but I didn't open the head I didn't take the head off or, or look at the rings or anything the records told me it had 190,000 kilometers on it um, so it should have been fine now it started good and it ran okay but it never had the power that it had that I was supposed to have played with the timing played with the turbo um, never could really get enough boost out of it so we're gonna do an oil analysis on this and most likely this isn't going back in again we'll rebuild this one over time because there's got to be something wrong we'll do an oil analysis and then we'll also tear this one apart this one hasn't ran in a while I just want to drain a little bit of oil until you have uh, the bottom contaminants or whatever off and then just fill it up and it's that easy they prefer if you wipe it off but. so we'll send that away and uh, see what it comes up with. Here we go. So the oil analysis came back in my inbox this morning. I got two little emails and uh, it's kind of interesting going over them to see what I'm looking at. I'm um, going to start with the Dodge, which is interesting because I sent Tormont my um, serial number on the engine and it actually showed me the oil analysis report done in 2012 and 2011 by whatever owner did that. Back then, the truck had 50,000 and 50, 53,000. I don't know why they would do it 2,000 kilometers apart. Huh, they must have suspected there was an issue, but there was nothing wrong then. Um, the numbers were actually really low. So back in 2012 and 2011, I got their search results along with my one that I did in August 2016. Now I got a monitor compartment because my iron, my chromium, and my aluminum were high 
higher than should be, but not anywhere near to be concerned about. So it doesn't say um, <laughs> you're going to have catastrophic failure because we've got half your piston laying in the oil pan. But um, we definitely got to keep an eye on it. So um, my iron parts per million were 49. My chromium was only 5 parts per million, which I don't know why they said that it's high. Um, maybe because it was higher compared to the previous tests done in 2012, I'm not sure, but 5 parts per million for chromium is acceptable. Um, actually 10 to 30 would be. And aluminum is 50. Now the aluminum is pretty high. Um, now my silicone is also high, which means that silicone is sand and that would mean a dirty air filter. So I'm hoping that um, the air filter was dirty and a lot of extra uh, just that not that it was a lot but um, he had a K&N filter on it it was extremely dirty now uh, um, we'll, we'll back up a bit there as an air filter gets dirty the holes actually get smaller and it actually starts filtering better um, whether he had a leak in there and it was sucking air from somewhere else and getting a little bit of dirt in there I'm hoping that um, my reading was only 10 parts per million but um, it is higher than uh, any of the other readings that I've seen so I'm hoping a little bit of dirt got in there, wore the aluminum, maybe a little bit more. Aluminum is the pistons. And then uh, just by regular maintenance and a better air filter. Um, with future oil analysis, that will go down and I shouldn't have anything to worry about. Uh, because of that, I am not going to open up that black one. I'm going to reseal it and I'm going to put it in my truck. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. I drove it and it drove pretty good. It ran good. Um, it started good, uh, it didn't smoke, and there was a chip bag on the oil fill tube, and that chip bag did not blow off because of blow-by. So, um, <laughs> as bad as that is, I, uh, that, that could also be where some of the dirt was getting in too. Um, but other than that, the rest of the readings are pretty low. Now when we go to that red engine, um, it only has, it has high chromium, iron, and uh, lead in it. The lead is a little bit higher and the lead is starting to be bearing issues and uh, the iron could be anything from uh, the liners to the um, uh, timing gears, the oil pump, anything, uh, even camshaft and then the aluminum is a lot lower in that. Uh, the lead, the lead is high, the iron is high, and the chromium is high. Chromium is piston rings and I'm, I'm thinking that um, this one had a lot of blow by because I actually had to tie the dipstick tube down with a bungee cord because it would blow out and it would blow oil all over the engine. So that happened to me a couple times uh, and I checked my vent at the back of the engine. It was not plugged. So I'm thinking this one has a lot of blow by and we will pull this one apart. Just not right away. I don't have the time or the money to do that right now. When I find a prod or a project for that engine, and I think I do have something in mind, but I got too much stuff on the go. It's going to sit in the corner of the shop for a little bit, and we'll tear into that probably a year or so from now. But um, yeah, other than that, um, it actually checks for uh, to go over the test more thoroughly. Um, it checks for antifreeze, silver, aluminum, boron, barium, calcium, chromium, copper, iron, potassium, magnesium, manganese, uh, molybdenum, sodium, nickel, oxidation, phosphorus, lead, soot, um, sulfation, silicone, titanium, vanadium, and it checks the viscosity. So it's a pretty thorough, thorough check um, with a recommendation at the top, very simple plain English. And then if you want to go online and see what are actually acceptable parts per millions, because you will get somewhere in there, um, just just look up. There's a lot of threads on oil analysis, actually. But I feel very confident in putting this Dodge engine back in there. Um, and especially, I, I just found it neat that I got the search results from when the previous owner had it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to seal her up, throw her in, and hopefully be driving the Silverado in another week or two. Right, Kitty? There we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon. There's a lot of stuff happening there to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.
system on it. Look at that. They got barely vibrating. it didn't have four high or two high and they weren't lying <laughs> so the front axles locked solid <laughs> and uh, uh, there was a recall on the hoods popping up it does that <laughs> and uh, but the clutch seems okay and it runs pretty good actually so um, it's not charging because oh, the fan bolts off and uh, but I do have oil pressure so yeah not a bad track it's, uh, I don't think it's Laramie, and it comes with band-aids too, and it comes with somebody's two front teeth.